that I believe there's a lot of value around the notions of design and the practice of design, but I think the ways we have the conversation are important as well. And that's why I'm trying to like, you know, at least get straight in our own heads what it is that we might mean and what and what the basis of collaboration might be, might be. But at the same time, it's sort of escaping the academy and moving and taking on a certain kind of um, um, political significance again, like more EF and 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 capital. Um, and I think you know, as as the as I see people in university running after it, saying, "Wait for us, we're designers." Um, um, it's it's again worth trying to try to try to figure out what we're committing to when we do that. But the focus is primarily on the academic conversation. So, so the academic conversation. I mean, it, it comes down to funding as well, though, doesn't it? Like trying to convince people that they don't need to append the name designer to their project just because there's a big funding stream. Um, yeah, I mean, the design stuff, for at least in the U.S., is not, not associated with any kind of um, funding stream. It's not clear. It's not clear that you're, you're helping yourself uh, to um, by, by putting a name design for work design. Just a quick one. Um, you talked about the sort of ineffable mystique of design cultures. Do you think that if we actually are in the process of, going against my own point of view, do you, do you think if we're in the process of demythologizing this process of design, that we're actually going to realize that it's the emperor's new clothes, or is there something ineffable and mystical about design? Um, I, so, I'm not attempting to demythologize or to um, clarify what's going on, but again, I do think that it's a place where what the engineers mean when they say they do design is very different from what Johnny Ive says he's doing when he does design, right? And I think it's important that both sides sort of rec recognize that. So I, I actually, I kind of delight in this sort of like combination of mystery and mastery that's, in, that, that, that's, um, that's in there, while at the same time choking on the, 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 you know, the ridiculous statements, um, any one of which I could have put up, but that's like the one I just have incense here. As part of the human condition, not just you happen to be also. Awesome. Um, uh, so I, I actually, I think that's actually just fine, and I'm not trying to sort of like you know defease that. Um, but it does suggest, for instance, a potential uh, um, clash between these different kind of models of design that are that are that are at work. I think you know the extent to which this emperor's new new clothes. It's like it clearly works, right? Um, um, the Johnny I form of design clearly works. I tell you know, God, I have so many Apple products. It's like why well, I'm going to like need a new uh, annex to my house or something. It's just ridiculous. Um, I understand that, um, but I do think that again, it's like this question of like what we think is going on with design and what it means for design to be. I wonder what it means for us as academics to say design is the ground upon which we can all meet, while also suggesting that. Ground is somehow like nine thousand feet in the air and made of clouds, right? <laughs> um, uh, you know that, that it's, it's how it sort of grounds out an academic conversation. I'm more concerned. Uh, just a question for you. So um, for me, uh, so I work in imagination, and I kind of I often end up thinking, particularly after your presentation, that maybe design is a is kind of a rhetorical word that allows you to excuse arbitrary choice. You know, allows you to abandon evidence-based models which don't seem to fit with the complexity of the world. So I just wondered on that light, where, whether or not you you intended to in, in, include the word creativity in what you said, whether you avoided it for a reason. Because very often when you talk about design, you're sort of saying you want people will mention that word. And I just wondered if you excluded it intentionally. Or whether creativity has a role in this style. That's a really good question, mainly because it's not something I thought about at all. Um, I mean, clearly, creativity is central to some parts of what the broader design enterprise is. I mean, there's a certain kind of like uh, slippage in, in what I'm saying back and forth between design as the master term or making as the master term, um, particularly with sort of with respect to like the hyperspaces and things. And the making also, I think, has a bit of that duality of the creative practice, but also the notion of sort of innovation and production that's, that's sort of really, really important there. So the extent to which I'm sort of like not being very, um, uh, not being very clear around creativity might actually be more a feature of how I'm thinking about the making stuff rather than the designing stuff, because I think it allows for a little more of that slippage. Um, but yeah, I don't have a really good answer. And the question, I think, for in my head then would have to be, 
how do I want to put together that sort of notion of a commitment to creative practice with all the other stuff around innovation and corporate you know, um, flexibility and agility and all of those things, which I think is often how it gets, uh, gets, gets, gets brought up. So at this dreadful you know, meeting on the future of cities, there was some uh, you know, entrepreneur telling us that you know, he'd been driving down the road in his um, uh, Bentley or whatever and had like, you know, hit a pothole and why couldn't his iPhone have automatically detected that he hit a pothole and sent out a complaint to the um, city government so they'd come and fix it so he wouldn't like, you know, damage his car again tomorrow. It didn't seem terribly creative but it did seem to be very much bound up in an idea that the solution for um, civic improvement was to put this stuff in the hands of the app makers. Um, and it's more perhaps in that area that I'm sort of thinking about this sort of like design stuff. But it's a great question I need to think some more about. <laughs> we have time for one more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that the uh, truly innovative products of design can work on a large scale? So, because it seems like whenever we come up against something really big, like a natural disaster, we always fall back to what we know works and what's trying to test it rather than new ideas. And do you have an example of the truly innovative products and design? Just like the kind of things that come out of hack spaces. I mean, I think a lot of this is about context, right? So, there's always the, what's the context within which your design can be deployed? Um, and I think, especially in the sort of case of natural disasters, it's just you know, many of these things reach beyond the level. Uh, you know, the individual or lots of like small pieces, you know, um, individual activities that can somehow be collected together. I think part of the problem of that particular model of sort of innovation is that it suggests that there is no goal for anything larger than the individual. There's just, it's just a sort of process of massification of a bunch of that. But I think the failures to be able to act in those cases come not from how innovative or non-innovative the um, designs were, but from the context within which they had to had to operate. It's not a very satisfactory answer, I don't think. Go on, Keith. The <laughs> last one. I, I see you sitting there. I'm going to struggle to articulate this one, but, but I guess what, what I'm thinking is, is are you seeing evidence of movements that in the, in the sort of Western maker cultures of competition, it, it feels like, hanging on to what you said about both skill and mysticism, you know, when things come to the West, like, like karate or whatever, you get your belts and then down levels and all the rest of it going into the mystic. Is, is there a similar sort of, mm -hmm. would you predict that such a, a thing is going to happen? Would people design it? I never predict, although well, that's really intriguing. Um, one of the groups we worked with in China were really kind of interesting because they positioned themselves at, at sort of in a, in a sort of boundary position where they spoke differently to different sort of people. So to the to the Chinese audience, to the Chinese community, the Chinese audience, they positioned themselves as the people who were bringing to China a series of Western ways of working more flexibly, more fluidly, um, whether it's like Google 20% time projects or open source or all these other things that they sort of, they felt were sort of, the innovations were Western innovations they were bringing to, to China where otherwise the manufacturing model was fairly super optic and, and, and structured. But exactly at the same time, in their participation in Creative Commons and various other things, they would position themselves to the, um, the Western audience as the heirs to hundreds of years of Chinese communitarianism and collective action and, um, and, and so uh, um, you know, able to uniquely uh, um, understand the ethos, that they, the ethos at work. So I don't think, I mean, these, these things don't move culturally easily and it kind of, it's like there's you know, this perspective about how you want to articulate it or what story you want to tell about it today. I mean, I do think it's interesting that yes, you get, you live in a world of competitive yoga, right? Like, right. What, what, what kind of world is that? Um, and so it's clear that, as, that there's many different kind of ways to sort of try to recontextualize these, these practices. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm intrigued by the, by the, the, the belt system and the dance system and the, and, the, and the possibility to turn this into a, into a competitive thing. I will say that we went in, in the last workshop I did in Shanghai, um, 
we had a, a little like um, they wanted want to do like a hands-on workshop. So one of the guys from Indonesia was like doing one of his standard like you know, intro intro DIY projects where you take like you know a, a USB webcam and turn it into a microscope and things like this. And so they had we had everybody do it. It's like a bunch of hackers and a bunch of academics and these weird people. Um, and Sylvia was really shocked that I did it faster than anybody else. It's like it wasn't meant to be you. It's like you've got like. The guy who invented the 3D printer over there. Who did you do that? <laughs> so it's like every so often these things come from academia, and not surprising. But it was, it was like competitive meeting. It's a very thing. Alright, I'm going to see it's getting warm in here and there's a refreshment uh, at the back. Um, this isn't a question for Paul, but I, I've been thinking this while we've been talking about it. I wonder how much this kind of notion of what design is is indicative of the struggle of how universities understand the production of knowledge, and particularly the division of theory and practice, mm -hmm. and that uh, we're still sh struggling with these notions of what's a value, and this height on design is where these things meet, and becomes this kind of problematizing that we still are wrestling at a time when universities were set up in a positivist movement and had an infrastructure that still accentuates that. Which I shall leave you all to ponder <laughs> on over the uh, thing. So can we thank Paul again? For thank you.